Hello YouTube and welcome to this next part of Dumpster Linux. Now what we're going to look at in this part is loading the Lubuntu desktop and getting rid of the Unity desktop. But then we're going to take a little look at that uh, Lubuntu desktop and then we're going to no load GNOME on top of it in order to regain some of the integration that we've lost by ditching Unity. Don't worry, it'll all become clear. Before I start on that, I'd like to say something about the command line interface, or CLI as it's known, and that's where we type commands rather than using a graphical um, interface window. Um, once you get used to it, you'll probably find out just how powerful it is and how quick and easy it is to do some things through the command line rather than using uh, the graphics tools, you know? It's a different tool for a different job, and while you could easily just cut and paste a lot of the things that I'm going to tell you about into a command line and just let the machine do its job, it might pay you to get used to a few things. There are various books around and they can be quite heavy reading, some of them. Uh, one of them was Running Linux. Um, that's from a uh, the O'Reilly series. I mean, the O'Reilly series are good books. Uh, you know, they're pretty thorough. This is a bit old now. This is the fourth edition. Um, but there's other things in here that can help you out. Like, for example, uh, one person was asking me about Samba. And there's a section on configuring Samba in there and all the rest of that. That, by the way, is file sharing to the uninitiated. So, now we're going to go back to the desktop and start issuing some commands and you'll find the commands that I'm issuing in the hoo-ha bar. Here we are back at our desktop and we're going to grab a terminal. Uh, you've done this before, uh, you probably saw in part 4 uh, that we're just it should be in your recent apps. If it isn't, just type terminal in there and you'll get a terminal window. Now let's just focus in on that for a minute and we're going to see what commands are going to be entered. Um, just let this grab focus. Bingo. Right, now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to type sudo apt-get install lubuntu-desktop. That's going to be our first command. So uh, by this we're going to ask it to um, ins install the uh, Ubuntu, the Lubuntu desktop, and that's what it's going to do. That's command number one. So we're just going to press command for that. We have our test package. Uh, do we want to continue? Yes, and that is now going to install. Uh, we'll just leave it do its job. <sighs> that's going to take one minute, 53 seconds. So once that is done, we're going to reboot the machine. That's all downloaded and installed. I've rebooted the machine and now we are here. We're going to click on the sort of Unity symbol and get a list of the various options that are on here, the various desktops if you will. We're going to make sure that Lubuntu is selected from the list and then we're going to give the password. And this will install our, or, or give us, our uh, Lubuntu desktop. Just wait a moment for this to set itself up. You can immediately see that the background has changed. And give it a moment to sort itself out. The hard drive is going bananas. <laughs> you can see that we have a very plain, simple page with uh, a toolbar down the bottom. Now, actually, that's quite clean. Very clean, in fact. Very unfussy, and some people prefer it this way. I'm going to take a, a little look at the taskbar down here. Um, you have, uh, as you can see, the what's the equivalent of the start button there, Bink, and you have your menu structure. You have um, a file manager. This is the file manager here. Is uh, let's have a look which one it is. It it's PC Man FM. Um, personally, I choose Dolphin, but that's up to you. It's also installed the Chromium web browser as default. Um, you have the ability to iconify all the windows. Middle click to shade them and then you have two virtual desktops which you can configure. Um, then you have the application bar that's running and over to the right hand side you finally have um, your volume control, um, your networking control, uh, your clock and your shutdown. Whoops. So you can change all this. All you've got to do is right click. Uh, this is a panel. You just right click and uh, there you have some options. You can actually focus in. 
the taskbar settings and that's the settings for the taskbar option within here you can add and remove panel items or you can remove the taskbar from the panel the panel settings create a new panel and all the rest of it we're going to look at the panel settings and the uh, different settings you can change uh, in here now you're not stuck with it in any one particular location um, you can have it bottom, top, wherever you like, alignment, center, yada yada, width, height so you, if it's a bit too large for you, if you're on a smaller monitor you can uh, drop the height down a little and the icon size as well uh, you've got control over the appearance of it um, but more importantly you have the panel applets now these are what makes up the bar and you can see we have the menu on the left which then had an application launch bar and in the application launch bar if we click edit you can see um, if I just zoom you out a little more um, you see a uh, menu available applications on the right and what's on the left so you could get rid of chromium browser remove and if you had Firefox installed which we do um, we could add Firefox and remove chromium and that will instantly show itself on the bottom on the bottom left for us. So you can add things in there if you wish. Uh, you can add FileZilla for example, whatever you like. Um, so your quick applications you can pick out of your menu and put in, which is pretty good. You have spaces to help all these things and you can just adjust things up. And there you have the volume control, system clay, digital clock and the app launcher bar. And you can move all these things around. Uh, you can move them up, move them down, ch change how the whole thing works and you'll notice how we've got the stretch option for the taskbar so that uh, the taskbar is effectively in the middle and it's stretched so that the other things are pushed out to the side and that's what gives it its look so you've got a pretty powerful control here over how it's how it's acting um, there is one issue which sometimes happens which means the system tray you see loads of blank icons and I believe that the way is to just remove the system tray put it back in and all those odd icons will vanish but um, that's been on earlier bin builds and it looks like they've got that sorted now um, so bingo there you go you actually have it there <laughs> now um, that's the look and feel that's how it goes it's nice simple straightforward and light on its feet some people will prefer this so spend a bit of time uh, looking around it. What I'm going to do is link to two Lydios videos by Linusium and those are going to be some tutorials which give you a better, bit of a better look into Lubuntu, into this setup and, um, <clears throat> and, and give you a tour around a bit more of the configuration uh, why invent the wheel basically. Um, so if there's anything that you're stuck with it, there's plenty of videos out there. But for now we're actually going to put the GNOME panel on um, to do which we are going to go back into our accessories and we're going to ask for a terminal and bingo there is our terminal once again our friendly neighborhood CLI now just zoom in on that and uh, what we're going to do now is uh, LXDE should already be in there but we're going to try it anyway we're going to do a sudo apt get install um, LDE, LXDE, LXDE should be part of this but we're going to do it anyway um, it should say, oh no it isn't, so we're going to install LXDE right, um, once this is done uh, we're just going to go back down to the bottom here because we need to change the configuration file <coughs> One of the handy things that you can find in the terminal if you mistype something is that you have callback, you have history. And you can use the up and down arrows to get up and down that history if you need to and edit things. I'll show you in a moment once, once this is finished installing. Uh, as you can t tell, a lot of stuff comes with this. So if you, uh, if you absolutely don't need it and you prefer the, um, uh, the Lubuntu standard desktop, then you don't have to do what we're doing now. Uh, what we're doing now is going to uh, give us back some of the uh, <laughs> some of the functionality, uh, some of the integration rather that that we've lost, and I'll show you that in a moment. Because if you were to click on, I think the volume. I'm just going to do that now while we're looking at that. Yeah, all you get is a volume control. You don't get the integration in to um, Rhythmbox or anything like that.
Now I'm going to use the up and down arrows and you can see um, the command that we just typed there because you can then use the arrows to go in and edit a command um, in order to issue it again if you got it wrong and you've got quite a history in there. So what we're now going to do is edit a file. <laughs> so we're going to use sudo so run this uh, with full administrative privileges and we're going to use a text editor called nano there is a text editor called vi but it's a bit of a pain in the neck <laughs> and uh, we're going to slash etc slash uh, x uh, xdg slash um, lx session slash lubuntu it's a capital L um, and we're going to edit auto start now I'll just pan over that so this is our command uh, obviously sudo execute this as root nano which is the name of the editor and then the file that we want to adjust now note that we've got a lubuntu in here with a capital L um, on some things you'll find that it's lxde in case of that uh, in place of that on some tutorials but because we've loaded Lubuntu, and that's where we're coming from, this is actually the name of the file that we need to change. Now I'm going to edit that, and uh, boom, boom, here we come up with our screen. And you can see a few controls down the bottom, you know, control uh, options. Dead easy. And uh, we're just going to come up to the code that's in here. Now what we need to do is change uh, a piece of code in here. You see this um, LX panel? profile Lubuntu. Well we're just going to take the cursor to the right of that and we're just going to delete that and that's the line we want to get. It may be in a different position so be ready for it to potentially be on a different line and we're going to replace that with, uh, what are we going to replace it? Gnome hyphen panel, G-N-O-M-E hyphen P-A um, N-E-L. So replace that line with Gnome panel. Now once we've done that, notice that I didn't delete the uh, the at symbol at the front of it. Now, what we're going to do is go down here, and we're going to use the exit command. So I'm going to use Control X. That's going to ask us, do we want to save? We I type Y return. That's it. Having made that edit, um, I'm just going to now reboot the machine, and uh, we'll see what the changes are. One of the things to watch for is any instructions that allow us to add GNOME panel to the Lubuntu installation, it asked us to install the entire package LXDE. And as you saw from the screen, it came with quite a few other packages as well, quite a few dependencies. So can we install the GNOME panel without installing all that? Yes, we can. If you followed part 4 and you did the same as I did, which was to install that large chunk of applications which was in one statement, you should have installed it already as part of the GNOME Utils package which was in that list. So in theory you can skip the sudo apt get install lxde and just jump straight to the section where you edit that file. If you haven't followed that then GNOME panel itself should be a package in its own right so there should be nothing stopping you from issuing sudo apt-get install gnome-panel and if you're a bit confused about the spelling it's in the hoo-ha bar for you so I'll list them as a few ors so it should either be installed already or sudo apt-get install gnome panel or, at the worst case, sudo apt-get install lxde. Here we are with the GNOME uh, interface, basically running all the GNOME toolbars rather, and we'll start with a nice simple one, which is uh, the lower toolbar. Um, as you can see, there's not a lot here to report. You just have the, um, the hide all button in the left, and on the right, um, you have the workspace switcher there. The default is only for, for, for two workspaces. At the top, however, you can see things are different. It's almost looking like uh, the Unity interface did. And as you can see, we pretty much have all the integration. 
uh, we have our option there for the system settings, displays and all the rest of it um, where our logout, suspend, shutdown are you, ha you are able to switch the accounts there um, you have the clock, diary, time, date and you'll notice that we now have the link back to Rhythmbox as we did before and you have the connections and all the IM um, options there uh, to the left you then have the usual uh, as found but rather than the um, <laughs> rather than the um, rather than the classic unity lenses we have a more traditional applications menu uh, and places now there are a few things uh, to potentially notice which uh, you'll see that we can't actually um, right click on here to get any options up or to adjust any panel settings to do that we have to hold down both the alt key and the super key which is also known as the windows key then we can right click with those buttons down and the ability to right click we can then do various things we can then add things to the panel we've got the properties etc etc now the panel properties themselves are relatively uh, short uh, sm uh, short and sweet you can see that we haven't got much we've got the orientation um, we also have the size, expand, auto hide and show hide buttons and you've got the background for the panel itself that's not the background for the window by the way uh, if you wanted that you'd right click uh, on a, on a, on a uh, blank area and go to the desktop preferences as normal um, the one thing that you will notice is that this doesn't have any options to move and if you're running two screens these panels might be on the wrong screen so you need to move them and you do that by also holding down the alt and super key while you actually drag and drop, while you actually click to drag and drop so for example I could just uh, hold down the alt and super and drag this to the left or to the right or back at the top or um, you've also got the option to delete the panel if you so wish and that also sometimes uh, you'll find that most of the options themselves will respond to the right click uh, without the uh, alt and super key needing to be pressed but you'll need the alt and super key if you want to remove those options from the panel itself like um, Lubuntu you'll find that these panels are actually customizable uh, so you can add things to the panels move them around and all the rest of it just use the alt and super key and you can move the items. For example, I could move, um, I could drag this over to the other side where I should be able to. Um, right click, move, and then I can move it uh, across other areas. Also, you'll find that you can actually drag and drop applications in. For example, Blender, I could just drag and drop that in there. So uh, you can have your most uh, frequent used applications in there in the bar so you can just right what single click them and away they go you can also do that with uh, Lubuntu itself you should also be able to drag and drop the icons in but Lubuntu can be a bit uh, more awkward in some respects uh, simply because it is so light if you right click on applications uh, you get the option to edit the menus and let's see um, how much this gives us okay let's zoom in on that a little and uh, you can see what's going on you can edit the menus themselves you have your categories on the left and the sub uh, the items on the right and you can tick to show or hide an item if you want or you can edit it um, and ask for the properties rather you'll notice that the properties of any application um, tip typically is what you would enter at the command line so for example that's the command that we're going to exit uh, execute if I just ask for a terminal and I typed that command at a terminal you'll see that it starts at the calculator <laughs> so a lot of the uh, GUI stuff, a lot of the menu items are actually just repeating things that you could type in um, at the command line itself and that's actually quite handy if you want to create a new item um, you just create the item, give it a name what the command would be if you were to, if you were to type it in um, at the command line and any comment that you wish to give it and hey presto that's another way of uh, turning commands into symbol icons for yourself and you can add it into the menu and also drag and drop it into your uh, quick bars so uh, there's one final thing that we need to do 
and that is that we need to deinstall the um, Ubuntu desktop. And that is, with the terminal up, you simply sudo space apt hyphen get remove Ubuntu hyphen desktop. Quick view on that before I just hit the button. Uh, you'll need to do this whether or not you put the GNOME toolbars on or not. Um, that's the, one of the reasons being is because without the Ubuntu desktop gone, uh, there'll be some various problems with the updating mechanism. It'll say, I can't update because there's a package conflict. So you just enter that. Uh, there goes the package list and it should now proceed. Uh, am I sure? Yes or no? Yes, I am sure. And that will proceed to remove the Ubuntu desktop. Once that's done, reboot the machine and you should be, uh, ooh, done. <laughs> the Ubuntu desktop has now gone. So here we are, we've uh, gone from Ubuntu, we've easily installed the Lubuntu desktop. On top of that, we've then put the uh, GNOME toolbars and then we've removed the Ubuntu desktop. Bingo! <laughs> So what we're going to look to next is now that we've basically got the uh, got the system up and running, uh, all our applications installed, we're in the nice uh, nice environment that we want to be in. We can then start about customizing this and uh, getting to learn what applications we can use and turn it into a useful tool for us. See you in the next part of uh, Dumpster Linux. There's one last trick that I want to show you before we move on, and that's the ability to start up a file manager with uh, root privileges. Now if you're copying from a memory stick, uh, those are typically formatted in uh, FAT, FAT32 or possibly NTFS, and those shouldn't give you any problem because uh, the user systems and authentication in that doesn't matter a lot to Linux. However, if you're moving files uh, between systems using a Linux file system um, then you could have issues where the user IDs don't match and then you're going to get uh, you're going to start getting permission denied issues one easy way around that is to actually um, create yourself a little menu now the first thing that you need to do I mean I'm using Dolphin um, as my file manager and I'll show you why I use that in a moment but I'm going to start it uh, as me with no extended privileges. That means that all the files are necessary before <laughs> are written. Um, hopefully you would have done that before. Now we're just going to right click on applications and edit menus. Now <clears throat> I'm just going to zoom us in on this so you can see what's going on. Ba -bum. Right, I'm going to put our icon in the system tools and I'm going to ask for a new item. And this is where things uh, you need to uh, be careful what you're doing. You change the application to application in terminal. You call it whatever you wish. We're going to call this sudo dolphin. And the command is all important. In this case it is sudo dolphin. Now, as you're probably aware by now, sudo means give, um, give elevated privileges uh, and then run the command dolphin. So a dolphin window will pop up. Uh, you replace Dolphin with the name of whatever um, whatever file manager you wish to use. Um, if you followed the uh, the instructions that I gave in part four, uh, you should probably find that Dolphin is already on the system for you because it's it should be in amongst the list. Now, why do we put it in a terminal? Uh, we put it in a terminal because then it gives the system the chance to ask us for the root password. So I'm just going to press OK to that. I'm going to close this and I'm going to start up, I'm just going to go into the menu I'm going to go into system tools and I'm going to click on our sudo dolphin icon what happens is, if I just zoom out a little is that we have a terminal window that asks us for the password and that, away we go, bink, we have um, we have a file manager which will allow us to do whatever the heck we want and uh, to hell with the consequences <laughs> Any responsibility for anything we do in here is purely going to be on our shoulders. You'll notice that there is no actual um, easy way of telling what kind of privileges we have because we still have the username up here. Um, <laughs> the most we can see is that uh, we're focused on root there. 
Now, one of the other things that you need to remember is if you move any files with uh, this window, they will be owned by the root user of this machine. So after you've moved them, uh, don't forget to right click, go into the properties and uh, change the owner um, to whoever you need the owner to be. Otherwise, once you kill this window, <laughs> you'll still get a permission uh, problem. It's it is not actually that bad to handle permissions. Um, most USB sticks and um, hard extend external hard drives that you buy are typically formatted with FAT or NTFS anyway. So the chances of you coming across this are actually quite minimal. But um, you never know. <laughs> what I'm now going to do is kill this Dolphin window and you will see that the terminal window beneath it also goes. Now I'm going to bring up uh, a copy of Dolphin and you'll see why I like it. Um, I like it because it's a lot more flexible. You have uh, toolbars and uh, by right clicking on um, by right clicking on them you can lock or unlock the panels. These panels are unlocked. Um, I'll add another panel in for example. Um, I could ask for information. There's an information panel and because it's not locked I could sling it anywhere I like. Um, I could even take it outside the window if I wished. Um, I could also ask then for another panel, which is, for example, folders. Um, there we have it. It's in tab down there. And I can uh, drag it out and do what I wish with it. And whatever I do will get reflected. I also find that Dolphin is a lot uh, more steady with regards, or more flexible with... Um, I'm just going to lock that panel. With regards dragging and dropping bit between applications. Why it's more flexible than the PF, um, whatever the heck that comes with it, I don't know. Um, but I prefer Dolphin. Um, you should be able to change the default application somewhere. Um, under Applications Preferences, um, you have Preferred Applications. And once you have the Preferred Applications window, you can then do things like um, change your web browser, change your mail browser, uh, mail client rather. Um, I don't go for either of these, I go for Firefox and I'm currently using uh, Clause Mail but more on that later as we come to the applications. Um, and also there should be a way to change your default... Uh, I've forgotten where it is... <laughs> to change your default browser. Um, you have desktop preferences. Um, is it under there? No. Um, there's your wallpaper, by the way. You can change your wallpaper there. Stretch to fit, background colour, fonts, all the rest of that. But anyway, um, I prefer Dolphin. Um, up to you what you decide to use. And um, yeah, that's how you get uh, get a uh, get a, an icon in the menu that actually gives you elevated permissions uh, to move files around. Uh, just be sure to check the ownerships when you're done. Uh, next part, we'll start to have a look at some applications. See you then.